All right, so now on to one of the most asked questions in project finance interviews, and that question is about the differences between corporate finance and project finance. So, when they ask you about the differences, you should be very clear in your answer and talk about uh, the key components of project finance and corporate finance and how do they differ. So first and foremost, corporate finance is about direct lending. You can see this arrow on the slide, how it goes from the lenders to the corporation. It's a direct relationship. So lenders are dealing with a company that has a history, uh, that has a past, that has a credit history. They know already the profitability of the business. They know already the credit quality of the business that they are dealing with. And that's how they determine the credit trading. The credit trading of this company will be contingent upon the credit worthiness of the borrower, will be contingent upon the history of the borrower. And if the company defaults on its debt, if this company to whom they are lending money defaults on its debt obligations, then it's not a problem for the lenders because they will have a claim over the company's assets. Okay, so that was in corporate finance. We have a company that has a history, that has a credit rating, and lenders have a claim over the company's assets. Now on to project finance. In project finance, the borrowing entity is not a company that has a credit history. As we said in previous lectures, the borrowing entity is this newly created structure. You can call it an SPV, special purpose vehicle or special purpose entity or special purpose company that's the borrowing entity that's the legal entity that we created for the purpose of the project this is the entity that the lenders are lending money to so it's different from corporate finance in corporate finance they are lending to a corporation that has a history in project finance they are lending to a corporation that was uh, created recently that's brand new. And that's why you'll hear often in project finance that this technique of financing or that project finance in itself is a non-recourse or limited recourse technique to finance projects. Because when the lenders lend money to the SPV, they don't have recourse over the assets of the sponsors. It's much riskier than corporate finance. So the sponsors, uh, the sponsors are just a company or a group of companies who own the project and who provide resources and support for the project. So yeah, they are shareholders, but they also manage the project across all stages and they will ensure the success and the delivery of the project. So let's recap, let's recap what's non-recourse or limited recourse project finance is about. So non-recourse project finance, there is no recourse to the project sponsor's assets for the debts or liabilities of the project. Limited recourse project finance means that there are limited obligations and responsibilities of the project sponsor. That's why we say it's limited recourse. So lenders could require that all assets that the project company SPV owns to be given as a collateral to them. So yeah, they could protect themselves. They could ask for a collateral, even though project finance is a cash flow based lending technique where, uh, where we're, in which we are highly dependent on future cash flows, even though it's the case, lenders could still ask for a collateral and that collateral we call it a security package okay so that's the difference between corporate finance and project finance corporate finance is less risky we have a history project finance lenders are lending to a brand new entity that has no history but they still ask for a security package they still can claim they still can have a claim over the SPV's assets. But there is a problem in that. 
Because, okay, they can ask for a collateral. That's good in the case of corporate finance. It's good because if the company defaults, lenders will be able to recover most of their losses in corporate finance. But in project finance, will the collateral or the security package help the lenders recover their losses? Will it be enough for the lenders to recover the losses? Well, not really. Not really. Because suppose you're building a road or a tunnel, then the project all of a sudden faces some challenges, some uh, unexpected events, and defaults on its debt obligations. So yeah, the lenders will have a claim over the SPV's assets, but okay, then what? What will they do with those assets? What will they do with this bridge? What will they do with this road? Can they sell it? Can they liquidate it easily? Not really. It's much harder than that. They can't do much, actually. They can't do much because the assets are highly specific. And in most cases, they are illiquid as well. So that's why this security package, this collateral that lenders ask for in project finance, is more of a defense mechanism rather than a real protection against losses. So it's a defense mechanism. It's a way for lenders to put pressure on the sponsors to make sure that they are fully involved in the project, to ensure that the sponsors have enough skin in the game and that they can ensure the technical and financial success of the project. All right, so that was the detailed discussion about some differences between corporate finance and project finance. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to recap those key differences in a very structured manner. And we'll be able to have a much more concise and structured uh, layout of the key differences between project finance and corporate finance so that it's crystal clear in your mind when you go to your interview. All right, and now on to the next lecture.